I know I said on my community tab that I wasn't going to be making a video because I was exhausted. Um, but I just decided to go off script literally and just share my thoughts without there being all the nice editing and the, the nice typed out script. So first talking about Serena, she played Maria Sakari for her round of 16 match. After 5-2, when it was time to close out the set, things started to change. She started to make more unforced errors. Her feet started to move less. And it was really reminiscent of her loss to Shelby Rogers in um, Lexington. And at 5-all, then um, the old Serena came back. The good Serena came back. And um, she really started to pick things up again. And she was able to close out the set, not playing her best, but it was good enough to um, to close out the first set. Now, the second set was was much different than the first. In its start, Sakri went up 3-1 due to, due to Serena's poor play. But at that point, Serena tied her hair up into a bun and tucked her skirt in, and she was really a different player. She started to move well once again, started to really move her feet, um, there was no, she wasn't planning her feet. She was make, She was really having good footwork. And she won, she ended up winning four games in a row. And so I thought, oh, well, this is another routine Serena comeback. And serving for the match at 5-3, she loses two points in a row, character, like two um, points in a row, uncharacteristic, off of uncharacteristic errors. And then she wins two, then she wins two points in a row. So I'm like, okay, the next two will, she'll win. And it's the opposite. She loses the next two points to to lose the game. And then she lost another one and another one. And it's not like it was all bad. She had chances at 5-6 to, to break Sakari. But she, it was a combination of Sakari's good play and Serena's errors. And in the tiebreaker, I just, I got the vibe. Even though Serena was, she was up 4-1. I got the vibe that she was not going to win this tiebreaker. It's just you could tell when Serena is closing out a match, you can just tell. You can look in her face that it's going to be closed. She looked in distress when she was, even when she was winning, when she was up 4-1. As the commentators uh, pointed out, she was rushing, not really rushing, but she was forcing her serve, not really just letting it be natural. She was forcing it using her arm. She wasn't making any first serves, and that really opened the door for Sakri to um, to take advantage of of that and get into the points more and um Sakura eventually she won the set when Serena lost that set it was like all hell broke loose but it wasn't as dramatic she was just her energy was dropped her energy dropped um starting in the the first game I think it was the first game of the set she was on serve I believe um and there they had this long game it was like a, a five minute game it was long deuces and within that game she was just hitting fast serves double faults fast serves aces um just slapping ground strokes and that was the first indicator that she wasn't right mentally i still feel like if she perhaps could have um won that game then maybe she could have done better later on in the set and possibly I don't know, maybe I've even won the match, but since she she never even gave herself a chance. Her her she was just dumb mentally from that from that lost set. Cause as the commentators were saying, she should have and she knew she should have been in the locker room by now. She should not be playing a third set. But here she was fighting to to stay in a match that was already delayed an hour and a half due to rain. So she definitely did not want to be out there. And then another good point that the commentators, ESPN commentators brought out, brought up was that she was going to have to play again against Kanta, who is a tough opponent and who was playing well. I don't know. I guess it would be qualified as tanking because when you think of tanking, you think of Nick Kyrgios, um, Bernard, Bernard Tomic, just, um, just not caring, slapping the ball around. And I feel like with everything... It's mental. I feel like you can't. I mean, it's just mental. It's, it's nothing physical. It's all mental. And with Serena, it was all mental. Like I said, she was thinking that she should be in the locker room by now. And she's out here playing yet another um, third set match. And yes, she lost another four consecutive games. And at five love, 
we were just waiting for her. I was just sitting up there. I was just, I was doing my math homework, just sitting up here waiting. Okay, just please just let it be over with so I can just turn off the TV. Because I just, I don't know. I didn't want to turn off the TV. I just wanted to watch until the end of the match. But bizarrely enough, um, or oddly enough, she she kept fighting in a way. Like she she was she was still tanking in a, in a sense. I don't know. I'm t I'm kind of tentative with using that word because I think just mentally she was just gone. But anyways, she was still kind of fighting, especially she faced like six match points um, and she just refused to give up. You, you would think that she would just double fall and throw in the towel or slap a ball in the net, but she did not want to to give up. I can I can understand that just. I can understand just not caring about the other points, but still it's match point. You're one point away from losing and you do that. Um, you don't want to lose. And eventually um, she ended up winning that game. But at 5-1, it was just too much. I could sense that something was going on with her maybe physically as she was holding her arm, then her, um, her quad. And I was kind of, I touched on this a bit in my previous video and saying that, I don't think I didn't think she was all the way there physically as she had all those tapings on her um, thighs and on her even her back. She just went away mentally and I can I completely understand. I put myself in her shoes because I'm a tennis player and I've been in that predicament so many times of you doing all this. You should be you should um, win the match in straight sets. You should be off the court. You think about you should be being off. You should be. Um, you know, doing your rehab, doing your press conference, but instead you're out here playing. And then you also think, man, I have to come back out here again and and play this match against this girl who previously had beaten me. And I'm not saying that um, is Kanta's like level is, re is the reason why she would be having those thoughts, but it's just the f matter of having to play another opponent. So I can understand um, that. But concerning her for the U.S. Open, I'm right now I'm on the fence about whether or about how this affects her for the US Open. First is concerning the way that she lost. Second is concerning because of the fact that she was unable to capitalize on so many opportunities to close out. It's not only this, but against Roos, her last match. Roos did play well, but Serena typical Serena fashion, she would have served that match out. And in against Roos, she had a whole bunch of um second serves. But I think that is concerning. I don't. She doesn't have that that killer instinct of closing the match out with all these with the aces, and she gets tight. She's she's been getting tight, and um, it's something she and Patrick need to look at and need to work on. Talking about Patrick, I noticed on Twitter that they were talking, um, not even Twitter, but the commentators as well. They were saying, "Why is Patrick not saying anything? Um, Serena's paying him all this money and all that stuff. Why is he not talking?" Um, as a person who has followed Serena for a long time, um, you know that she doesn't like to be coached. She likes to problem solve on her own, but I feel that like if she's this, if it's this bad, if she's, if she's literally slapping the ball around, if she's literally in this much distress, you need to say something. She didn't have the crowd there. The crowd also played a big role in this because I feel if, as if she, the crowd were there, she wouldn't have tanked this bad. So the crowd wasn't there. She didn't, it's not, we are not in um, conventional circumstances, of course. So Patrick should have done more. He should have just stepped out of his element and, and been like, hey, do this, do this, do this. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say on that. Um, I wish Serena the best for New York. Looking at the women's draw as a whole, just looking at the results today, um, just going by... Each of the matches, one by one, Murdens beat Kudobertova, who beat Pliskova. Um, it wasn't anything too special for Murdens. Um, it was just her normal, solid play. I did underestimate her because I thought the transition from her playing in Prague previously to now playing in Cincinnati, Cincinnati this week would be tough. But she's managed um, managed everything really well. Next, we have Pagula defeating Sabalenka. This result isn't... Um, unexpected. Pagula has been playing really well this week. She beat um, Jennifer Brady, who I believe would be facing Sabalenka. Sabalenka, it wasn't a horrible match on her part, but I still feel like she needs to rein in um, her 
her power game. At times, she didn't have to go for the shots that she went for. Next, Osaka defeated Yastrzemska 6-3-6-1. This match was honestly a, a bit of a letdown because I thought that um, as well as Yastrzemska played against Venus and Pera, I thought it would be a more competitive match, but it wasn't. And I, you could tell that she was, she was just... She was beaten up a lot, but not to take anything away from Naomi. She played really well in that match. Next is Kontovite versus Marie Boskova. This was a very impressive win by Kontovite as Boskova has been playing really well. Boskova just beat Kvitova. So I was a very good um, good win by Annette. Next, Joe Conta versus Vera Zvonareva. And speaking of good, good performances, um, that's another one from Joe. Just really solid tennis. Ange Jabour um, defeating Christina McHale, 6-3-6 love. Anz was really impressive in her um, routing over Madison Keys last night, and she just continued that impressive form against McHale. I've been really on the Jabour bandwagon for, since her Australian Open run this year, and I think her game with all her variety, it's very exciting, and it's well needed on the um, on the tour. Lastly, we have Azarenka defeating Cornet, 6-4-7-5. Just another impressive win by Azarenka. Just, it's really happy to see her play this well with everything that she's had to go, everything she's gone through. It's just really inspiring. Just looking at the draw now, at the matchups, we have Mertens against Pegula, Osaka against Kontavite, Kanta against Sakari, and Jabor against Azarenka. I think all these matches will be great um if i'm taking picks i'm going to pick pagula over murdens just based off of how well she's been playing um not to take anything away from murdens i just feel like pagula has just been playing really really high level tennis this week thus far next is osaka against kontavite kontavite is kind of she doesn't really have too many bells and whistles she's just a really solid player so i feel like this match is in naomi's hands and judging off of what we've been seeing this week thus far, I feel like um, Naomi's going to be um, in good form yet again. So I'm picking Osaka in this match. Next, we have Kanta against Sakari. To be honest, I said that if Sakari beat Serena, um, I'd pick her to reach the finals. But to be in total honesty, Sakari didn't play up to her potential um, in this match. I'm not saying that she played bad because she played well. But she didn't play as well as she did against Goff and against Putin Seva. Judging off of Kanta, Kanta's match today and Sakri's match today, I would pick Kanta. So I guess overall, I'll just pick Kanta in this match. And lastly, we have Jabor against Azarenka, which I think would be um, the top match to watch on the women's side tomorrow. Jabor can cause a lot of problems for Azarenka as her variety can really... It's, it's frustrated her opponents thus far this week, so... I'm going to stick with my pick, though. My, excuse me, my pick that I made yesterday. I'm going to say Azarenka will, will reach the semifinals. Now, moving over to the men's side, going through each individual result today. Djokovic defeated Sangren six two six four. It was a really solid match from Djokovic. A good improvement from his match yesterday against Barankas. We have Medvedev um, who beat Benaday. Benaday beat my predicted finalist Fritz. Just a really comprehensive victory from Medvedev. Now we have Bautista Agut against Hatchinoff. Um, really good comeback win from him, from Agut. I was watching that a bit and I liked how he was able to turn things around and really change up his game plan to frustrate the Russian. We have Opelka against Berrettini. Opelka has been really um, impressive this week. And I'm not surprised at all with him defeating the six seed Berrettini. Um, he can defeat just about anybody with his big sir. Not only that, though, he has he's really good off the ground. Tsitsipas over Isner in two tiebreak sets. Um, really, it was just Tsitsipas being the more clutch player at the end of the day. Raonic beat Murray comprehensively 6-2, 6-2. I did see a little bit of it, but judging off of what I saw and the scoreline of 6-2, 6-2, I just believe um, Raonic was too good. And Murray um, playing back-to-back -back matches, playing three-set matches against Tiafo and Zverev, it was just a lot. And um, Raonic was, was just a step up in class, honestly. And lastly, we have Kranovic, who um, beat Team. 
he beat Fuksovic with the same score today, 6-2, 6-1. And I'm really impressed with his performance. The last topic I'm going to be discussing in this video is Nick Kyrgios. Ben tweeted about Novak talking about finishing the year unbeaten as he's 20-0 and on the season so far. And in response to that tweet, Nick himself tweeted, Hell of a tennis player. May go unbeaten in 2020. Can't take that away from him. Unfortunately, when he was supposed to show some leadership in humility, he went missing. Majority would say he has taken he has taken an L regardless. I just feel like Nick is doing too much at this point. I've made like 10 videos and of him um just bad well, not really bad mouthing, but like talk talking and calling out somebody over this Adria tour. I understand his frustrations in that. Um, people, some people might not be taking this current situation as seriously as they need to be, but at the end of the day, um, it's all about your intentions and the way you go about doing things. I feel like his main goal should be, um, to educate Novak and Djokovic did apologize, but I guess that wasn't enough for Nick as he keeps tweeting and, um, just... Like, I just don't get it. This was unnecessary. It had nothing to do with, with Nick at all. It was just talking about his accomplishments. Why, Nick? Why? I'm just saying, why? Just please. I'm not... I, like, I understand it was, it was a very serious matter. I don't want to just say, brush like, let it go, but you need to let it go. You need to let it go. It's, it's like, enough is enough. I, we're just, like... Uh, it's it's your intentions. That's the thing. Your intent and the way you go about doing things. Calling him out on Twitter publicly like this, when in response to a tweet that has nothing to do with you at all, that makes people not have respect for you. George was even saying it. I I I sided with George and him saying that him publicly calling out the players like this it makes them not even care about what he's saying like you have to you need to do better in your delivery and your response it's getting it's getting really weird it's not it's not looking good but that's really pretty much all i have to say about that i do hope that nick um finds peace with that and it's going to be interesting um when or if and when he plays novak it's just not going to be good just in general, when Nick gets in those press conferences, he's just gonna he's just gonna let it rip. But yes, that's all I have to say for this lengthy, messy video. Um, I know it's unconventional, but if you did manage to stick around to the end of this like ten, what is it, like twenty minute video or so, um, let me know whether you liked this style of video. I know typically I write stuff on a type out my stuff on a script. And just go off of that and edit. But this was just me having no script at all. Just, oh my God, I'm shaking the camera. Just um, just speaking about how I feel. Because I'm just too tired to do a script and just edit. So yes, that's all I have to say. Let me know whether you agree with my thoughts in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell. So you're notified whenever we post new content. Also, thank you guys for 4,000 subscribers and um have a good day <laughs>